Wow. <laughs> Wonder Hussy here, driving around the farthest, remotest regions of the Death Valley Mountains on a blustery, gloomy, really mysterious looking day. I love the weather. The only thing I don't like about it is it's blasting wind. There's a high wind advisory in all of Death Valley. And well, that extends even way up here in the remotest, farthest reaches of the mountains. So I'm gonna get out of the car and go explore this, well, it looks like a little prospector's homestead, uh, but I don't know how much audio I'm gonna be able to record until I get inside the cabin. So bear with me, let's brave the elements and get out of the safe confines of the car and go check out this awesome looking little homestead. <sighs> I guess it's not that bad. We are kind of sheltered in this little mm, ravine or canyon. And oh my gosh, it is just absolutely beautiful. I don't even need my sunglasses. This time of year, it's springtime. All these beautiful wildflowers are in bloom. And well, it's just a great day to explore an abandoned prospector's camp, which I'm pretty sure this is. Uh, I think there might be some information inside the cabin that will tell us a little bit about the guy who lived here. Okay, before we run and seek shelter in the cabin, quick look around outside. Looks like there's an old stove laying out there on the ground. There's what looks to be an old table turned over <laughs> upside down. And then there's this. I mean, I don't see the point. There's not even a pit dug under it and it's right out in the open. So it must be a joke. Uh, I don't care how bad I had to go to the bathroom. I would rather just dig a hole. <laughs> then mess around with that contraption. But oh my God, what a beautiful sight for this homestead. Something about it reminds me of like a Japanese painting. I think it's that tree, that dead tree out front. It just, and then like the, the misty look to the sky today. It just looks otherworldly, like something out of J.R.R. Tolkien or something like that. Okay, so the front yard of the cabin is this kind of little flat area. And before we go inside, let's just see Oh, it looks like there's some more junk piled up over here. We have an old wheelbarrow, some really old camp chairs, <laughs> an old refrigerator, look at that. You can see the little motor at the bottom. Ooh, an old chopped ham can. Mm-mm, that's good eating. Okay, it's real windy, man. I almost just lost my hat, so. <laughs> well, I wanna go in this cabin to get out of the wind, but before we go in the cabin, <laughs> well, I'm sure we should address the elephant in the room, which is this awesome old bus parked up on the hill next to the cabin. I don't know if this was an old school bus. Was it a city bus? Uh, let's go inside and see if we can find out. At least we'll get out of the wind a little bit in here, even though the windows are all blown out. Oh, look at that, still in decent shape. Step on up. Oh yeah, it's nice and sheltered in here. <laughs> One seat left. Oh wait, my bad, two seats left. Look, two seats in the front facing each other. So doesn't that mean it was a city bus, not a school bus? Oh, look, there's a table in between. Maybe that was just rigged up because it was being lived in. You know, this was the dinette. <laughs> and then, yeah, it looks like there was some kind of fireplace in here. Like this is the stovepipe for it. So there was a little, some kind of little 55 gallon barrel stove or something in here. And then I'm guessing in the very back, there must've been some kind of bed or something, but it's all gone now. What a cool bus though. Low overhead, I mean, I'm almost touching the ceiling and I'm only 5'3", so you'd have to either be short or you could just hunch over, I guess, to live in this bus. Okay, well it is somewhat sheltered from the wind in here. So I guess I can poke around. There's some, uh, there's some graffiti on the walls here that's kind of interesting. I mean, these guys, Mayorga and Ozzy, were here in 2021, just a year ago. And then somebody here wrote, this is not Manson's bus, but it does bear a strange resemblance to Bonnie and Clyde's car in Prim. Okay, Bonnie and Clyde's death car, it's supposedly on display in uh, one of the casinos in Prim, the little uh, casino town on the state line of California and Nevada when you're driving from LA. Uh, but if you watched my video about Prim, well, huh, the car wasn't on display when I went over there. It was on loan to a museum in Simi Valley. As for the Charles Manson angle, well, the Manson family did live up here, not too far from here. I mean, not exactly close, but relatively speaking, not too far from here. The Manson family 
stayed at uh, Barker Ranch, and that's where they were ultimately captured and arrested. And they did have a school bus up at Barker Ranch, but I'm pretty sure the Manson family bus... It was never recovered. It was up there for years, unfortunately. I never got to go check it out, but uh, I think they found it in a mine shaft. Somebody drove it into a mine shaft or something. So this is definitely not the Manson family bus, but it's still a pretty cool bus. You know what I mean? Like, even though it's riddled with bullet holes and rust, it kind of looks cool, you know? Like the colors and the patterns. And I just love the fact that... <laughs> Well, you can sort of imagine what it would have been like to live in this bus. You can see how they had it set up there with their little dinette, the two benches and the table, right by the cozy fireplace. Looks like they even had a hook here on the ceiling to hang a lantern. Looks like somebody brought an old computer up here to destroy. I wonder what that's all about. I mean, we are a long, long, long way from anywhere, even by Death Valley standards. So the fact that somebody went through all this trouble to drag this computer up here and blow it up it makes me think there must have been something really bad on that hard drive and well if I was the kind of person who knew how to pull these circuit boards apart and you know find the information I might but I'm not I'm more interested in well frankly I'm more interested in getting out of this wind and into that little cabin let's go seek shelter maybe there'll be a friendly wizard inside will make us tea wouldn't that be nice Uh oh Notice, hantavirus may be present. Enter at your own risk. Oh, hantavirus or no, I gotta get out of this wind. And this cabin, from what I've seen online, is actually pretty tidy inside. Oh, door is well secured from the wind, because I guess it's like this quite a bit. Oh, oh yeah, see, very tidy. Man, we gotta bolt this closed from the inside, because it's so friggin' windy door will blow open. Okay, we're gonna pan around this one room little cabin. It's very tidy, like I said. Uh, I don't think it's totally rodent proof. Because, well, you can see there are some gaps down at the bottom of the wall there. Sorry it's so loud. That's because even though the roof is pretty solid, uh, while in this crazy wind, it's really, well, it's really making a lot of noise. But this is Oh my god, it's just nice to be out of the wind. Noisy or no, it's very cozy in here. So just going around the room, it looks like we have a table that folds down. Uh, it's Oh look, it's hooked down by a piece of, like an old uh, coat hanger. It's looped over it. You just unloop that. And then you lower her down. And you've got yourself a table! Holy cow, I don't even know if I'd want to sleep in this cabin on a windy night because God, it makes it seem even windier being in here. So bear with me if it's a little bit noisy in this video. I think it'll be totally worth it to check out this awesome cabin. Okay, so it looks like the windows are from one of those old RVs. It's an old jealousy window where you crank the handle and those, well, I'm not gonna do it because it can be kind of hard to close them. All those little louvered slats open up. I actually have windows like that on my vintage travel trailer. Same deal with this window over here. And these windows don't have, well they, well, they do have glass in them. The louvers are there and there's a screen behind it. So you could open it up on a nice summer day and let fresh air in and that'd be really nice. What's up here? There's some things on the shelf here. What does this say? Lospizio, Lospizio. And then there's a, it looks like a phone number. Is that like a, it looks like it's from Europe. Is that somebody in Europe's phone number? Is this like, for a good time, call Los Blizio at 0439768625? Moving along the room. Oh, look at this really cool DuPont explosives products. Uh, it's a print of some ducks. Oh, what's this? Is this like a really old innards of an old telephone? I think it is. Look at that. Isn't that where the, like you would hang the receiver? And this is what the bell rang. Ding, ring. Oh my God. If you're watching this video, what if you, uh, what if you called that number that was on that candle and just out of curiosity while you're watching the video and this phone rang in the video. Woo! Wouldn't that be a trip? And I answered it. Hello? And then your voice answered back. Uh, uh, what? <laughs> Anyway, uh, then there's a pack it in, pack it out sign because we are in Death Valley National Park. Uh, and then, oh, here's some information about the guy who I think used to work this claim. It says, Emmett 
Gypsy Harder. Oh, and he signed it in 2018, only four years ago. I feel like, doesn't Emmett Harder write books about Death Valley? That name sounds very familiar to me. I feel like I've read about him. Um, wow, so I don't know if he built this cabin or he's just working a mine claim here and kind of takes care of this cabin, but whatever the case, it is in very good shape. And I'm gonna do everything I can to leave it that way, or if not better. Although there's really nothing I can do to make this place better. It's already, it's already pretty tip top. What's this, business card on the floor. Join us for all of our adventures. Uh-oh, pin in the atlas. We'll all be. I was beaten to the punch by pin in the atlas, my friends. I did a video interviewing them once. We stayed at a ghost town together one time and I did a little interview about them. Uh, Steve and Andrea traveling around in their truck. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and put their card back up. I don't know where they hung it, but it was laying on the floor. I'll just put it up here on the shelf. <laughs> Hi guys. Okay, well, next to Pin in the Atlas, we got a mirror so you can check your makeup or shave your beard, as the case may be. We got a little shelf with a few things laid in, some hydrogen peroxide, that's good for first aid, old coffee can, full of nails, you'd need that if the roof blew off overnight. And what's in here? Uh, some springs and hinges and such, stuff you might need to do repair work around here. Uh, what does this say? After filling, close lid and replace wood piece to keep mice out. What is this? Fill on top. Please. What? Oh, it's a water tank. Look at that. And then it's connected to this pipe that goes into the sink. Look at that! It's even got a little tap on it. Okay, so I guess the idea is uh, if you were gonna stay here and you wanted to use the uh, tap on the sink, you'd have to fill this thing full of water. And then when you're done, when you leave, you've gotta put that piece of wood back on the top so mice don't fall into it and decompose and contaminate the water because, oh gosh, I don't know if you remember a video I made with my friend Jessica. We stayed at a cabin, I guess not that far from here as the crow flies. And she got really sick from drinking the water in the cabin. So you, you never want to do that. You always want to boil it, purify it, or, oh gosh, in this case. I mean, I don't know what's in that tank. You know, what I, I don't know. It didn't seem like a very good idea to me, but I guess if you were staying here for a long time, working this claim and you wanted plumbed water, you could clean it out and fill it with water and it'd be okay. Anyway, oh, there's like a big old battery under the sink, so I guess you could have electricity in here if you hook something up to that. We do have a stove. It looks like a gas stove, and there is a thing of propane hooked up to it, so it might actually work. And there's two lighters next to it. Look at that. So maybe this stove really does work. Wouldn't that be something? Oh, well, you probably wouldn't want to use the oven. <laughs> but you could cook something on the stove top, you know? I'm not going to waste the propane by lighting it up because... I'm not planning to stay here overnight. It's way too windy. The wind is supposed to last until like 2 a.m. and I, I wouldn't get a wink of sleep. So I'm not gonna fire up the stove, but I am gonna peek into these cabinets. Like, first of all, look at this amazing old bread box. I love that font, bread. <laughs> Reminds me of the band bread. Let's see what's inside. Oh yeah, there's some log books. We'll check those out. Matches. Some papers, another pin in the Atlas card. Okay guys, we know you were here. All right, we'll check those log books in a minute. First, let's look inside these cabinets. Mouse proof, lock this door inside first, please. Okay, we will. So you open this side first, which by the way, there's a really cool shower caddy with a couple few kitchen utensils hanging on it. Look at this. We got some cans of soup, some baked beans, some Chicken seasoning. Oh look, fancy French cut green beans. Let's see what's on this side. It says lift latch behind door. Oh, I see right here. That's the mouse proof. Okay, well we'll make sure to latch that again when we leave. Oh, look at that, there's even some dishes laid in. Oh, how cute. Oh, I love these bowls, except for the fact that there's mouse turds in them. Unfortunately, I guess it's not rat proof. Huh. Well, the cupboard is slightly on the bare side. I'll have to see what I can do about that when I leave. I think I have something in my car I could spare. Let me go ahead and latch this back up the way I found it. Okay, let's see, did we miss anything else? Here's some more information from Emmett Harder. What does he have to say here? 
Notice of intent to hold. On this day, the 25th day of July in the year of our Lord, 1991, I, Emmett C. Harder, San Bernardino, do hereby give notice that I intend to hold the Lone Tree Mill site. Oh, I guess that's where we are. I guess that makes sense because there was that one tree out front, so the Lone Tree Mill site. Wow, very cool. What's this over here? Baking temperature and time. Oh, look, it shows how long you need to, how hot you need to heat the oven and how long you need to bake everything from breads to cakes to egg, meat, milk, and cheese dishes, all the way down to two crust pies with cooked filling. Mmm, oh man, now I'm getting hungry. Oh man, what if I was? What if I got stranded in this cabin and all I had to eat was whatever's in this cabinet? <laughs> Uh, well, I guess I'd be having chicken and dumplings with a side of baked beans and maybe even some French green beans on the side. Oh, and I would season it liberally with that chicken seasoning. Doesn't actually sound too bad, but I'm still gonna go see what I have in the car and if I can contribute something. Uh, well, I guess that's all there really is to this little cabin. I mean, there's a little prep table next to the stove so you can put your cutting board or whatever. There's a little tiny uh, fireplace wood burning fireplace and I bet that would heat this cabin right up. You got that little sucker fired up. There's a bin next to it for the firewood and there's a few pieces of wood in it, but really not much. Uh, what does this say? Please regulate the air vents carefully on this stove. This kind of a stove can get too hot and melt, but usually it just explodes. Yikes. Warning, this replacement stove can be dangerous. Oh gosh, I'm thinking that I wouldn't even use the stove if I stayed here. I'd be too afraid after reading all that. Huh, oh look at all these, what are these? Recovery chains? Oh no, I guess it's like snow chains. Isn't that what that is? A really old set of snow chains like you need when you're driving through the snow, which I guess it does uh, snow up here. I think we're at, oh gosh. I better check the elevation. Oh gosh, yeah, we're almost at 5,000 feet, so I bet it does get snow up here sometime. And, well, maybe you do need snow chains from time to time. Hey, I also noticed something else when I was looking down on my phone to, to check the altitude. Uh, at first I thought this was just a bare concrete floor, but if you look at it, it's actually one of those really cool old linoleum carpets. Look at that. It's a piece of linoleum made to sort of look like a, like an oriental type rug. Apparently, yeah, you couldn't get real oriental rugs out here. It was too cumbersome, so somehow it was easier to just have a big piece of linoleum that looked like an oriental rug. And Well, if you use your imagination, if this carpet was still vibrant and was covering the whole floor, I bet it would make this room seem very cozy. Although, to be honest, it already is pretty cozy. I mean, yeah, it's loud with the incessant banging and rattling from the wind, but I don't know. I feel like... Well, I always have this hypothetical, if I had to shelter from a storm, well, today is stormy conditions. So if I had to shelter from this weather, uh, yeah, I'd be really happy to be in here, uh, noisy or no. Hey, I just noticed something else when I looked up. Well, first of all, it looks like there's an old screen door up there, so maybe you can fit that in the summertime to the front door, that's cool. But then look at over next to it, what are those? It's two long wooden poles. And there's like handles on them up there. Oh, it's almost like there's scissors on this end. There's like a hinge thing between them. What do you suppose that's for? Oh, it's a cot. Isn't that a stretcher you carry? Like those are the handles on one side and then those are the handles on the other side. And it was supposed to have, you can see where the material tore off in the middle. There was like, there was a, some fabric like canvas and you would put a person on it and carry them out if they were injured. Yikes. Well, I don't want to think about that happening. All right, well, Golly, it's so noisy in here. I was gonna hang out in this cabin for a bit, maybe make a cup of cocoa, because it seemed like a nice cozy thing to do on a blustery day like today, but it's so dang loud in here. Well, I do really want some cocoa though. Oh hell, I'll do it. Okay, while I'm waiting for the water to boil, let's look through some of these log books. What? You don't put hot sauce in your hot cocoa? Well, you should try it sometime because it gives it a really nice zing, especially on a blustery day like today.
Could the wind possibly be letting up for two minutes? That'd be nice. <laughs> uh, anyway, while I was waiting for the water to boil for this cocoa, I was reading through these log books and there are some pretty interesting stories in here. I mean, first of all, people have been coming up here since like, I mean, look at this, 1984, Desert Rats, Reaper Taurus, four by four, yeah. <laughs> 94, Desert Rats back again. I mean, there's entries in here coming all the way through the 90s, the early 2000s. I mean, people have, have some pretty cool memories at this cabin. Uh, not all of them were that friendly. I was reading this one. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, here it is. Okay, so it's November 25th, 2009 which is Thanksgiving weekend. And a little side note, uh, this cabin is sort of in an area where there's a bunch of other cabins you can stay in uh, that were built by old time prospectors. And well, they're all first come first serve and they're usually occupied, especially on a Thanksgiving weekend, which <laughs> this story kind of goes into. I'm just curious what you guys think about this story. I'm gonna read it to you, okay? Uh, I'm gonna drink my cocoa. If you wanna pause the video and go make yourself a cup of cocoa, then uh, you can come back and we'll drink cocoa together and I'll read you this story while we sit in this cabin in the middle of this blustery windstorm in the Death Valley Mountains. Go ahead, I'll wait for you. Okay, got your cocoa? Did you put whiskey in it? I would have put whiskey in mine, but I'm not traveling with any whiskey, <laughs> just hot sauce. Ah, oh, that's delicious. Okay, so here's the story. So our story begins on Wingate Road. We make the turn towards Mangle Pass in a 1968 Jeep M715. I don't know what that is, but it's a 68 Jeep. We start drinking heavily about half of the way up. Turns out this was a bad idea considering we were on the pass at night. We scraped the front differential on a rock. When I checked on it, it was pouring differential fluid. Some quick thinking by the driver repaired it with a few good whacks from the mini sledge. Covered in gear oil, we continued to the first cabin. It was already taken. The other cabin in the valley was taken. The third cabin in the valley was taken. We're tired, dirty, a little drunk still, and we just want to sleep. So we go to the biggest of the three cabins, knowing that it has extra rooms. We park the truck and we're greeted by the occupants. Uh, let me just interrupt the story to say, the custom at these cabins is first come, first serve. So if you get to one of these cabins, no one's there. There's usually an American flag, which I didn't see one here, but you hoist it up on the flagpole and that lets anybody coming up the road know that, oh, the cabin's already taken. And so the, in my way of looking at things, the classy thing to do is, oh, okay, well, the cabin's already taken. Unless it's a dire emergency, like really bad weather or something's wrong, I wouldn't go knocking on the door asking if I could stay with the people in the cabin. Anyway, we parked the truck and were greeted by the occupant's dog, which they sent out to us. I make friends with the dog, but at this point, a woman emerges from the center room. She seems nice enough, allows us to stay in a room next to her, and returns to bed. Well, that's pretty classy. I mean, if some two drunk dudes drove up in the middle of the night, I don't know if I'd be that friendly. Anyway, they set up, we set up shop, bringing the two 12 gauges inside. You never know who you're gonna bump into in the desert. We chat, sleep, wake up, make coffee, and we chat with the occupants. We make small talk, and she claims, I heard everything you guys said last night, as if it is somehow significant. She then immediately requests, when are you leaving? We took the hint from the greedy, inhospitable individuals, packed up and left immediately. We went to the other cab, one of the other cabins, in hopes of meeting some more generous people. We were met at the gate by an older gentleman who essentially told us to f off. We went on to the third cabin, no greeting, wouldn't even open the door. On down the trail, we bump into the first nice group. Since we got here, they direct us here. We make camp and head over to their camp to share our beer and whiskey. We return back here and build a coal base to cook our Thanksgiving steaks on. During this process, we see headlights <laughs> coming up the road. Fully prepared to offer our visitors a beer, instead, we're greeted by two park rangers with M16s telling us, keep your hands where, you can, where we can see them. We know you're armed. We comply, were searched, questions, and had our weapons confiscated. Apparently, the people who sent their dog out to us called the rangers and claimed, and I'm quoting the ranger, two punks with shotguns were threatening us. The rangers aren't stupid. They spoke with us a short while and determined we were telling the truth. We were given a small fine, and now we have to go pick up our guns in Furnace Creek. Big fucking whoop. Happy Thanksgiving to us. I wish there were more generous people in the desert who don't believe that 
wilderness belongs to them simply because they arrived there first. I love this place, and any traveler who happens across my trail is welcome to all that I have. Signed, One Disappointed Man. Anyway, I just thought that was an interesting story, and I'm curious what you all think about it. To me, it kind of sounds like the guys were jerks. They showed up in the middle of the night, drunk, probably kind of loud and rowdy. That woman was kind enough to let them stay in this cabin next door to her, and... I mean, it's true, you never know who you're gonna run into in the desert, but you know, I might be kind of uncomfortable if two drunk dudes with shotguns rolled in and wanted to sleep next to me. I, I gotta be honest, I don't blame that woman at all. I mean, I do take his point about sharing whatever you have with any travelers who come up, but I guess it all depends, you know? Like if you're a woman, like it was a woman in his story, well, it's different, you know, you gotta be careful. Anyway, uh, I thought that was kind of an interesting story. There's a lot of other stories in here from people who've been here over the years. Looks like the last person to have been here was Pin in the Atlas, and they were here on February 24th, 2022, which is almost two months ago. And they left another business card in the book. That's the third card of theirs I found in here. You guys sure are spending a lot of money on business cards. Anyway, I guess I better write my own entry. Let's see. Okay, I wrote, Wonder Hussy rolling solo, exploring the beautiful Butte Valley. Extreme wind advisory in the park today, so took shelter in this cozy little cabin. Made some hot cocoa, read the stories from past visitors in the logbooks, then went on my way. Beautiful spot, long may it last. Sarah Jane. That about wraps it up. My cocoa is almost gone. There's just one more thing I have to do before I leave this cabin. Uh, I forgot, I have these little first aid packets that uh, one of my viewers, two of my viewers, Kim and Jared, made me a bunch of these first aid packs to leave in places like this. So I didn't see any first aid supplies in here at all, except for that thing of peroxide. So I figured this would be a good cabin to leave this at. So instead of extra provisions, I'm gonna leave them some band-aids and stuff. And I'm gonna put it in the mouse proof cabin. Uh, if somebody doesn't think that's appropriate, I guess they can move it. I'm just gonna put it right here next to the chicken seasoning. Hopefully no one will ever have to use it, but if they do need first aid supplies, well, now they've got them. <sighs> mm. This cocoa hit the spot. I'm glad I decided to do it. Even though it was noisy in here, I did enjoy sitting in this little cabin, drinking this cocoa, reading these stories in these log books. And well, I'll probably be back up here. This is a cool place. I would definitely come spend the night here if it wasn't so dad gum windy. Put these log books back here in the bread box, just like I found them. Close her back up, roll the table back up, just like I found it, and latch the door securely so I can roll along to my next destination, which is pretty much just as cool as this amazing cabin, but, oh gosh. It is going to be windy, and I'm not going to lie, while I was sitting in there, I thought to myself, maybe I should stay here. But you know what? It's pretty cozy in my rig, and my rig doesn't make half that much noise when the wind rattles the roof. <laughs> much quieter. I think I made the right move, taking a page out of the tortoise playbook, <laughs> and sleeping in my shell.